Trondheim, Norway's gateway to the north and the country's largest city in proximity to the Arctic Circle Line. In this full city guide, I provide my top 10 tips for the perfect visit of all important landmarks and sites in Trondheim. Stick around to the end for some additional tips and times to visit, transport, accommodation, budget, safety and more to make the most out of your visit. Norway's third largest city is beautifully situated where the river Nidelvar meets Trondheim Fjord. Founded in 997, it was a strategic city during the Viking Age and even served as the capital of Norway until 1217. In this video, we're gonna go on a tour to the most important sites of the city. If you haven't seen it yet, also make sure to check out my full Norway documentary series and other city guides on Norway and Scandinavia. And subscribe to my channel for more useful travel content. But now, let's get to my top 10 sites and explore the very best of Trondheim. A great starting point for any exploration of Trondheim is the lovely city centre. I stayed in the outskirts of the city and took the car into the centre, but buses are also available if you want to avoid the rather pricey parking fees. Trondheim city centre is very pedestrian friendly and can easily be explored on foot. The quaint streets are lined with small shops, cafes and historical timber houses and it's fun to discover the many local small businesses, picturesque buildings and museums throughout the city. A must-see highlight of any Trondheim visit is of course the impressive Nidaros Cathedral. This imposing church dates back to the year 1070 and served as Northern Europe's most important Christian pilgrimage site during the Middle Ages. During that time, and again after independence was restored in 1814, the Nidaros Cathedral served as the coronation church of the Norwegian kings. King Hakon VII was the last monarch to be crowned here in 1906. It is considered the most important Gothic monument in Norway, the second largest medieval cathedral in Scandinavia, and the northernmost cathedral in the world. From the church, let's stroll over to the picturesque Nidalva River. The famous old bridge Gamle Bibro, which dates back to 1681, crosses the river and offers marvelous views downstream where the river is lined by colorful traditional timber houses that nowadays serve as restaurants, shops and hotels. On the other side of the bridge, the renowned Baklandet Quarter invites you to wander through the cobblestone streets, relax in cozy cafes or head down to the river to watch the ducks and seagulls feed their younglings. Thank you. 
still in the buckler dent quarter, make sure to check out one of Trondheim's curiosities, a bike lift device that was installed to facilitate bikers the steep way up the hill. Unfortunately, when I was there, I was not able to witness anybody using this unique device that is free of charge. On top of the hill, the monumental white Christensen fortress thrones above the city. Completed in 1685, its function was to protect the city against attacks from the east. And indeed, it served its purpose when it successfully repelled the invading Swedish forces in 1718, but was later decommissioned in 1816 by Crown Prince Regent Charles John. The harbour area of Trondheim is a great place to wander around. Stroll along the pier that is lined with ultra-modern buildings or take a boat or ferry to some of the adjacent islands and ports. Another fun thing to do in Trondheim is to pay a visit to the Corky Rockheim Museum. Officially named the National Discovery Center for Pop and Rock, this unique museum is housed in an old modernized warehouse that was retrofitted with a box-shaped colorful roof and has since become a landmark in Trondheim's cityscape. The exhibition is dedicated to the history of Norwegian pop and rock music and showcases a multitude of local artists which seemed very recognizable to the local visitors but whose names and music I had never heard before. But even then, the musical discovery journey it provides with numerous theme rooms and interactive displays is absolutely worth checking out. For the best sunset view in the evening hours, head back to the fortress. Just remember that Trondheim is close to the Arctic Circle, so sunset hours can vary dramatically depending on what time of the year you are visiting. When I was there in the summer months, the golden hour seemed almost endless, offering me some extended time to fly my drone over the city. Check this out. For my last tip, we are heading south of Trondheim to Drovefjell National Park. Located a good two and a half hour drive from Trondheim, this amazing nature reserve in Opland and Trondelag is known as one of the very few places in the world where wild musk oxen can be spotted. Drovefjell is characterized by vast expanses of high plateaus, rocky peaks, deep valleys and glacial features. With a bit of luck, you will see the impressive musk oxen in their natural habitat. They are truly historical mammals and among the oldest mammals to walk our planet. 
They used to live here in this area in great numbers around 20,000 years ago. Initially extinct in the region, musk oxen populations got reintroduced here in 1937. Their most notable features are their thick coat, long curved horns and the strong odor the male oxen emit during the mating season. It's a truly unique experience that I highly recommend you check out when in or around Tron time. So now that we've covered my top 10 tips for Tron time, let's get to some practical tips for your visit. When is the best time to visit Tron time? The best time to visit Tron time tends to be the summer months of July and August, which offer the warmest and most pleasant weather. The days are long with extended daylight hours, allowing for more time to explore the city and its surroundings. Where to stay in Tron time? Tron time offers a variety of accommodation options to suit different preferences and budgets. Several hotels are available throughout the city, but for the best value for money and a perhaps more local experience, you may want to consider renting a private apartment or house through Airbnb or other vacation rental platforms. If you're coming with a camper van, you can also find more affordable campsites in the outskirts of town. How to get around in Tron time? Getting around in Tron time is quite easy, thanks to its efficient public transportation system and very compact layout. Trondheim city center is very pedestrian friendly, making walking one of the best ways to explore the area. But the city also has an extensive bus network and is connected via railway. The railway station is in close proximity to the city center. Lastly, another great way to get around is by renting a bike. Is Trondheim expensive? Well, Trondheim, like pretty much all cities in Norway, is on the expensive side by international standards. Hotels and rental accommodations are likely the biggest cost factor, but eating out in restaurants can also quickly become very pricey. Entrance fees to museums, attractions and tours will likely also be higher compared to other destinations. So all of this quickly adds up, but it's still possible to enjoy the city's attractions and experiences on a budget with some planning and smart choices. What to bring for a visit to Trondheim? Like in most of Norway, the weather can be quite unpredictable and rainfall is rather frequent. So a waterproof and windproof jacket is essential to stay dry and comfortable. If you're coming in the colder months, make sure to pack a hat, gloves and scarf to protect against the elements. And wear comfortable shoes for walking and exploring the city. Is Trondheim safe? Yes, Trondheim is generally considered a very safe destination for travelers. Norway in general has low crime rates compared to many other countries and Trondheim is no exception. But like in any city, it's important to take common sense precautions to ensure your safety. Just remain vigilant and exercise caution especially at night. So here we go. With this, I wish you a happy travel to Trondheim. Please give this video a like and leave me a comment down below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel to get updates on my latest travel videos and tips. And make sure to also check out my other travel videos on beautiful Norway and Scandinavia. Looking forward to seeing you soon again. Have a good one.